Over the last three years, I have been working to completely reinvent the concept of the ghost train. People can expect a heart-stopping experience that includes grand illusion, live action and special effects that will completely rewrite the rules of what theme parks can do. Yeah, no, it was rubbish. Welcome back to Expedition Weekly. Are you ready to have your mind derailed? <laughs> Just a word of warning, if you've not been on this and plan to in the future and want to see it for yourself, I recommend you don't watch this video until you have, as the first time you experience this, it's better not knowing what will happen. <laughs> Let me take you on a journey. Following on from our look at the Fort Park Arena, Darren Brown's ghost train was teased on the 8th of July 2015 after being planned for multiple years under the codename WC16. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please mind the gap between the train and the platform end. This is the suspended service from Thorpe Park Junction. All aboard Derek Brown's ghost train. Prepare to embark on the one-way journey to... The attraction was designed by Merlin Magic Making, the creative team at Merlin Entertainment, along with the input of famous British illusionist Darren Brown and his team. Hello, I'm Darren Brown. I'm at Thorpe Park today, and we're just trying out some of the components of the new ghost train that opens soon. Hope you enjoy it. The actual creation of the ride was a collaboration between Simworks, who have created media-based attractions around the world, starting with their first immersive tunnel ride, The Lost Temple, at Movie Park in Germany. The virtual reality scenes in the ride were created by Figment Productions, who have created many CGI and VR movies for Merlin Parks, including the VR addition to the air at Orton Towers, and the short-lived Kraken Unleashed at SeaWorld Orlando. The ride's transit system was created by Seven Lam, who has provided many theme park trains around the world, including Disneyland Paris and Hong Kong, along with Intamin. Finally, the scenic elements were by Scruffy Dog, who Merlin uses frequently, as recent as Wicker Man, and the attraction was rounded off by IMA Score, whose music within theme parks is too huge to list, but if you've been to a European theme park, you would have heard at least something of theirs. Over a thousand specialists have come together to create this experience, and I believe this represents the future for theme parks across the world. Despite the talent behind the attraction though, it was ultimately flawed. Shortly before opening on May 6th, 2016, Thorpe announced it would not be complete in time and wouldn't open as scheduled. A second delay was announced on May 24th last minute again, stating a longer delay. Finally, on June 18th, the ride opened for previews with the early riders required to sign an NDA to not discuss what the ride was about online. The ride was advertised as a reinvention of the ghost train, mixing physical effects, intense live action, and cutting edge virtual reality to offer a one of a kind experience. The only problem is not one of these promises were achieved. The ride officially opened on the 8th of July 2016 to mix reactions. Some people loved it and some hated it. The ride experience began as you joined the queue outside the ride building, which was actually quite well themed as a derelict railway depot featuring mock protest posters about fracking, which, if you don't know, is the technique discovered to recover gas and oil from rock. A queue line photo was featured outside which did not help the already slow loading times, estimated to have an hourly capacity of 750 riders per hour, which is pretty low for a major theme park attraction. So today then, you are going to find yourselves in a unique adventure, and I want you to really immerse yourselves in this experience, and then afterwards discuss it with each other. You might find you end up questioning your own perceptions and memories. But though, can I ask you to keep what happens on the ride a secret? After entering inside the pre-show, it had a Pepper's Ghost Effect projection of Darren Brown, speaking about the attraction and the use of fear as entertainment. Next up, in the main station room, an old northeastern railway train carriage is seen suspended from the roof in chains. This is perhaps the best illusion of the whole attraction. After boarding inside, you find a modern London underground carriage where you take your seat and put your HTC Vive headset on, the exact same ones you can buy online. Now though, comes the first problem. It's rotting us from the inside. <coughs> We're like ghosts. Ghosts on a 
train track. Many of these headsets were out of sync, didn't work, or worse, the VR just didn't play at all. So the first section, there was a good chance you would just be sat in silence during the 13 minute attraction. As the train sets into motion, the ride begins, and you watch the events unfold around you as the story is spout out to you by multiple different scenes and possible characters you may get on your headset. Most of the fun resolves around you talking about the different experiences you saw to each other after the ride. Following the scene of a train crash, you're instructed to leave your seat and quickly exit the carriage. The outside of the carriage is no longer an old railway car, but a modern day tube. Another actually impressive illusion, but unless you're paying attention, you wouldn't even notice. The following show scene features the advertised live actors, an animated train crash, which mostly never worked as planned, and a smoke effect before you were basically shouted at to run back to your carriage, which would now head back the other way, via the use of a switch track while the live action scene was playing out. As the smoke, or gas surrounds you, most people on the ride just look around confused, and while the cast try and interact, it never really felt like anybody paid any notice and just wandered around. Back in your comfy London underground seat and your VR headset back on for the second VR sequence, which involved the train and its passengers being attacked around you by a demon, before you fell into hell and blackness surrounded you. Darren then invited you to open your eyes, and that was it. Oh yeah, and how can I forget? At some points, the ride ops run down the carriage and touch you to match with what's happening on screen. This was the reinvention of the ghost train. My ghost train. Darren Brown's ghost train only at Fort Park Resort. This ghost train though was not thrilling, fun, or even told a cohesive story, though it could be eerie for some. In fact, the story was not even understandable. You were supposed to learn of the infection, and it was that gas that had made you imagine this demon, but you would have never known that from riding it. The physical effects rarely worked. The intense live action was you being shouted at and told to run. When you really think of what the ride was, it was Nemesis Subterror without the drop, which was replaced by VR. Despite rumors of a viral outbreak, we assure you, the traveling public, that our services will be back on schedule very soon. All change. Darren Brown's ghost train, Rise of the Demon. The second year of operation for the ride, it was rebranded as Darren Brown's Ghost Train, Rise of the Demon. Fort Park at least tried to fix some things. The second sequence's computer graphics were now a scene shot with a 360 camera and looked more lifelike, including other passengers in the carriage with you complete with headsets on, making the experience feel more real. I'm sure every person in the first scene, when noticing they were alone in the carriage, actually checked with their friends sat next to them that they weren't. The headsets were changed so now you could hear the story and sound effects better and the action happened around you rather than looking outside the train carriage. Some of you may feel a bit confused when you find you haven't moved. Look back as you leave and you'll see you've been here all along. The ending was also changed with a bit more narrative from Darren as you left and a final surprise. As you exited the ride, the gift store employee tells you to stop and wait and the lights go out and a demon bursts through the wall of the store and roars and the experience has now truly ended. This addition was actually the best part of the update and it was needed. Just like with another supposed psychological Merlin attraction, which had issues, Nemesis Subterra, Fort followed suit and in 2018 added a chain link scare maze replacing the middle live action section. The only issue was it wasn't scary and it had no effects, so if you're one of the last people to get out of the carriage, you may even think this is just an extra cue to get back on. But it's, uh, it's scary and it's fun and it's um, very different and it's very ambitious and uh, it's, it's, I'm trying to hit, hit that balance of, of scary and just thrilling and exciting at the same time. You might have noticed I've been quite harsh on this attraction, and for good reason. Fort Park had the chance to create a unique dark ride storytelling experience, and they did what they have done way too many times in recent years. A half hour story trying to use the latest gimmicks that is just not planned for the long term, and you can experience a scarier time than this by riding the tube itself at rush hour. None of the aspects within are enhanced by the VR and just replaced by it. The ride is reported to have cost £13 million before any of the changes were made after the first year. The same as Saw the Ride. Thorpe had the idea of a grand immersive dark ride, which is bold for a UK park, but it falls drastically short of what the experience could have been. And I really hope one day the UK does get a top quality dark ride. I hope they continue to refine and improve it over the years to come, or I would imagine many people will not be too excited to ride this experience in the future. 
But hey, at least the terrible capacity won't be an issue anymore, and oh, it's still better than Fast and Furious Supercharged. With the success of Wicker Man and its theming, I hope this starts to see a shift away from the world first gimmicks that Merlin loved to use in the UK. VR is not enough by itself to immerse you into the world Fort wanted to create. They did though have another horror dark ride, but that is for next time. Don't worry, this is your stop. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Weekly. As a fan of Darren Brown, this ride was really disappointing to me, and I'm sure many of you enjoyed Darren Brown's Ghost Train, and this is just my opinion on the experience. So be sure to let me know what you think of the attraction in the comments below, and we will see you next time.